you for joining us this morning, the third Sunday in October, and the third Sunday of our anniversary celebration. We welcome you. We hope that you enjoy the service and that you are renewed in spirit when you leave this place. Now let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you this day for allowing us to come together once again in your presence. Father, we ask a blessing for this worship service. As we humbly come in, kneel before you, about that 
here and you know that uh, Brother John was admitted to a hospital again uh, this week. So we want to especially lift him up and also Ms. Morris. I think she's at home, but we want to continue to pray for them and pray for it that God gives them strength and a quick healing. I just want to lift up uh, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, early voting will begin. And you can vote at the election office uh, from 8 to 5 p.m. each day. Uh, they would not open up another voting area, I think, until October the 23rd, and that would be at the Civic Center. But just remember that you can do early voting starting tomorrow up until I think the few, uh, weekend before November the 7th. We also have Breast Cancer Awareness Month this month, but we want to lift up all people with all different kinds of cancer. And I'm sure that everyone here knows of someone who has been hit with that dreaded disease. And we just want to continue to pray that one day all cancers will be eradicated. Uh, as I announced last week, the KCA people with Kelsey uh, Acock Morrell Center is having a drawing tomorrow at 6 p.m. to raise money for the maintenance of that building. And they were, the tickets were $25, and if you were interested or have already bought a ticket, uh, remember the drawing is going to be online via social media. Uh, if you would like to do, make a donation or buy a ticket, there are some flyers on the, in the back right there that has all the board members' names and numbers that you can contact them and get more information about a ticket. Now, this is our anniversary month celebration. And as all of you know, usually during the anniversary month, we have a uh, history moment where we have always, in the past years, read everything about our history from the very, very beginning. We started in 1867. Well, this year we're going to change it up just a little bit. I'm sure everybody's heard about the history from 1867, maybe up until the late 50s, where the founding, all the founders, we always announce who the founding trustees were, the founding fathers were of the church and what they had to go through in order to keep this church on this corner. <laughs> but we, uh, uh, this has been drafted by Sister Bull, and we thank her for doing this. She went down and took out some moments and did them by decades. So I'm just gonna read a few to uplift some things that you may not have known about your church, even though Amen. those of you have been here all your lives. In the 60s, Metropolitan became a member of the United Methodist Church in 1968. And at that time, Dr. G. Boone Shropshire was appointed by the conference to lead us in membership to organize this church under the, under the United Methodist uh, guidelines. And during his tenure, he organized two choirs and he obtained roles for those two choirs. And in the 70s, especially uh, specifically 1971, Dr. Cameron Lawton came to Metropolitan and he led us in purchasing a church bus and initiated the first bus and breakfast ministry. And if a lot of you know have worked with that ministry through years. And you know we picked up kids, they had them hot breakfast, they did Sunday school, and then we took them home after church. Yeah. And in 1978, Dr. Reverend Joseph Crawford was appointed, and he initiated the first children's message during worship service. And I can still see Sister Della sitting there. Everybody sitting right down there in front of you saying, Look, my little angels, here's the message for this morning. And she also uh, twisted it in somebody's arm to make them get up into it. <laughs> but it was a wonderful thing to do. In the 80s, we had our, uh, we produced in 1982 under Reverend Robert Williams, is when we acquired and purchased the new parsonage. And it was also the year, in the following year, the 
graduating class at East Rome High School held its medical arts service here at Metropolitan, and it was the first time ever that the city school, the medical arts was held in a, in a black church. In the uh, later 80s, improvements were made to the sanctuary fellowship hall, and in 1984, under Reverend Robert Crawford, we started a food pantry, which Bobby Jean still wants to this day. <laughs> a, summer, a summer dynamics camp and tutorial programs were started. And then uh, in 1993, uh, Reverend Harvey Palmer III was appointed. And I'm sure a lot of you remember the, uh, the Reverend Palmer. He organized our first youth choir. There was 35 uh, members of the youth that was in that choir. And he expanded the tutorial program to, the, to include three sites. He also led us in purchasing new pews, the wall to wall carpet that we have today, new hymnals, new Bibles, and the library was established down in the lower part of the church. And that is all I'm going to read this morning. And I will finish up the 90s up until the present time next week. But that is just a part of what your church has been through in its 156 years. Amen. This church has a rich history, Amen. and we need to be mindful of our predecessors and what they've done Amen. and continue to follow their legacy. All right. Amen. Now we have uh, another uh, selection from our praise team, the selection of preparation for our message.
everybody doing this morning? Let's lift our sick and shut in once again. Bernice for bringing that up. Brother Ware is doing fine, even though he's back and forth in and out of the hospital, taking himself to the hospital every time. But he wanted me to tell you all that he's doing fine. They're going to once again send them back home. <laughs> <You're close. laughs> but uh, he, he wants to uh, thank everyone for, for, our, uh, for the congregation's prayers. Amen. Keep him uplifted. Keeps us the Morrison uplifted. Amen. Keeps us the Ford uplifted. Amen. All the rest of our sick and shut in uplifted. Amen. 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 We all need prayer. Amen. 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 Hey, how's everybody doing this morning? Everybody's blessed this morning. Yeah. Well, guess what? There is a word from the Lord. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So please turn to your Bibles or to your phones and turn to the book of Psalm. Yeah. The book of Psalm. Chapter 77, verses 11 through 14. The book of Psalm. 77, verses 11 through 14. Please stand out of reverence and reading of God's word, if you are able, please. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Once again, I switch back and forth. King James, New International Version, English Standard Version. We'll go over that one day in Bible study. There are some versions that I need y'all to stay away from. It's called training. Amen? Amen. 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 But some of these passages read a little different the way I like it. So for this passage, it is the New International Version. Amen? Amen. 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 And it reads, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, yes. I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your deeds. Amen. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great <laughs> as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. Yes. You display your power among the people. Don't read that one more time. One more again, one more again. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Amen. Verse 13, your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. I didn't even talk to Paula this week, and she did way make my God. God is good, isn't he, Paul? We hear. You display your power among the peoples. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearers of his word. If this message was to, begin, was to have a title, we would call it A Remedy in Remembering. A Remedy in Remembering. May we pray. Lord, we just thank you this morning for another day of new mercy. Another day of new grace. Yes. Another day of new favor. Yes. Lord, we thank you just for waking us up in our right mind. Yes. And we just thank you, Lord, for another day of just worshiping and praising you. Yes. And we honor you this morning for a celebration of 156 years. Yes. Lord, you are great. Yes. And you are worthy to be we thank you for this word, Lord. Decrease me as you increase in and through me. Let this be a message that blesses somebody this morning. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 And amen. amen. You may be seated. I oftentimes reminisce over my younger days. The memories of the many times God had brought me out of some impossible situations. Amen. 
some knucklehead decisions that I made during my college days. Finding myself in the wrong places. Yeah. Hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yeah. I won't go into detail here. <laughs> but managed to get my education and stop running from my purpose. Today all I can say is, but God. Yeah. It's even more satisfying when I think about those days when I'm going through a present crisis. In fact, if I can be transparent for a moment, these past few months have been a whirlwind of unexpected health issues, mental and physical fatigue. But my God, when I thought about how God brought me out of near death some years back, Amen. having a negative platelet white blood cell count and severe blood clot issues, all I could do is get on my knees recently. And thank you. Because I look back, I could be encouraged that God will bring me out of my current storm. In fact, I took a quick praise break when I was able to comfortably walk down a few flights of steps at my office yesterday. All I could do is look up and shout, glory. In the words of one of my favorite artists, Ty Trivet, same God right now. Same God back then. If he did it before, he can do it again. Let the church say amen. As with me, this historic church on the corner of Broad Street is at a crossroads at this moment. Pray with me, Sister Bernice. After 156 years of extraordinary feats and accomplishments, she has faced some recent challenges. Amen? amen. Having been through several seasons of various leadership changes and just recently making the bold move to disaffiliate with an internationally prominent denomination after some 54 years. Change is difficult. Change can be trying. Change can be hurtful. Change can be very, very strange. Rebuilding from what you once knew can be draining, can lead to division and even losing some people you served in ministry with for such a long time. But there is a word from the Lord this morning. I'm just here to encourage you. We place a sermonic spotlight on Psalm 77. The psalmist here is named Asaph, who was the great singer and musician of Kings David and Solomon's era. In modern terms, he was a praise and worship leader who historians have credited as the writer of this particular psalm, which deals with the troubled heart that remembers God's great works. Here in this text, the psalmist Asaph has a problem that is causing him much anxiety. Uh -huh. From the pretext found in Psalm 73, he cries out to God in distress, but receives no answer. Anybody been there? Yeah. The more he thinks of God's dealings with him, the more distressed he becomes. Amen. It seems that God not only refuses to comfort him, but even prevents him from sleeping. So as he lies awake in his bed, he thinks of God's kindness to him in days gone by. God was gracious to him then. Has he forgotten him now? It certainly seems so. It is as if God no longer helps him. As his thoughts go beyond his troubles, he finds his confidence in the controlling care of God's returns. He goes back and thinks of God's perfect record of redemption and miracle work in the past. He recalls the extraordinary history of Israel as proof of God's love and power. Events of particular note are how he has brought the people of Israel out of Egypt. Y'all know the story. By dividing the waters so that they could cross the Red Sea. God's coming to his people 
at Mount Sinai, even feeding them manna from heaven. These events are an encouragement to Asaph as he looks back. He knows that God, who guided Moses and Aaron, is still the shepherd of his people in the present moment. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what Asaph is doing right here, he is thinking about the past. When you think about the words, your past, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Is it an image? Is it a feeling? Do you think about certain people, certain places? Do those words take you back to a place of hope and happiness or hurt and humiliation? Do you remember with a smile or with tears? I don't know how much you thought about the relationship between your past, your present, and your future. If you have not, you must. Why? Because our present is shaped by our perspective on our past and our future. And because God speaks directly to these topics, let me summarize what God says about this particular subject. In regard to our past, God wants us to remember his deeds. In regard to our future, he wants us to rejoice in hope. And in regards to our present, he wants us to redeem the time. Or in the famous words of Congressman Maxine Waters, reclaim his time. Amen. <laughs> Here in this passage, the psalmist Asaph teach us some valuable lessons in what happens when we remember the passage I will remember found in 77 and 11. Listen to what Asaph the psalmist writes here. Let's begin by looking just at verse 11. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. As we talk about remembering, we need to remember that the psalmist has written this not as an entry in his personal journal, but as a song for the encouragement of God's people. So he is presenting himself as an example of what we should do, what we should always do. We should remember the deeds of the Lord, his wonders, his miracles. Is there anybody here this morning who can take a few moments to remember the goodness of Jesus and what he has already done in your life? Has he healed you from sickness in the past? When bills had to get paid, yeah. did he make a way out of nowhere? Yeah. <laughs> Has the Lord done something that made you look back and make you say, how I got over? Yeah. Somebody yeah. say glory this morning. Yeah. ASAP wants to encourage us in regards to remembering. And here's what I want you to write down this morning. The when in remembering. The why in remembering. The how in remembering, and the what in the remembering. First, the when of remembering. The day of my trouble, verses 1 through 4, we're breaking down the psalm, everybody. If we go back to the beginning of the psalm, we find in verses 1 through 4, the when of this remembering, listen to what Asaph writes. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without weariness. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. You hold my eyelids open. I am troubled that I cannot speak. The wind of this remembering is right there in verse 2. In the day of my trouble. Clearly the writer is troubled right here as he confesses in verse 4. He is crying out. He is reaching out to God. He cannot find comfort somebody. He is moaning and spiritually faint and he can not sleep nor speak. Have you ever felt like this? Maybe even just a little bit. When we think about our main verse, verse 11, in light of these opening verses, I think we can see that the psalmist Asaph 
wants us to see a connection here between the wrestling of the present and remembering of the past. For some of us, it is the past that produces suffering in our present. When we remember, it hurts, my God. But Asaph wants us to know that in the day of trouble, remembering is also a path of healing. It is a remedy to encouragement, to assurance. Remember the deeds of the Lord. But why is remembering so important? I'm glad you asked. The why of remembering. Has God forgotten? I hope somebody's following me this morning. Well, look at verses 5 through 9. In this section, Asaph describes for us the why of remembering. Look at what he tells us here. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made, made a diligent search, my God. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Verse 8, has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? As we discover in these verses, remembering is so important because our present challenges can tempt us with lies. <clears throat> Even lies about the goodness of God. Lies about his mercy. Asaph committed himself to remembering, to going back to songs he once sang, songs about the deeds of the Lord. Sister Geraldine blessed us with these following words just recently. Because all my life, you've been faithful. Yeah. And all my life, you've been so, so good. Yeah. With every breath, yeah. I am able. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. You see, when we think about the goodness of God, we can help to sing about his goodness. As song always seems to bubble up out of our souls as an offering of praise unto the Most High God. Amen? Amen. But in the midst of considering God's work, Asaph tells us at the end of verse 6 that his spirit began to search for answers. Answers to tell all these questions in verses 7 through 9. Did you see the common theme in those questions? Asaph is questioning whether or not his present suffering is evidence that God has given up on him. God has rejected him. Have you ever thought of God has ever rejected Metropolitan? You see, when we are suffering and when we are struggling with decisions or relationships or whatever it is, it is very easy to jump to conclusions about what our circumstances mean. In such times, we might be tempted with the idea that God is distant or disinterested, that he's even silent, and that we've got to figure out things for ourselves. Or like ASAP, we might ask, why is this all happening to me? Is God punishing me for this? Has he forgotten about us as a church? Should we just live off of the 156 years? But again, we know where the psalmist is taking us. Remember the deeds of the Lord. But what does this writer mean by remember? Which leads us to the how. The how. Of remembering. I will ponder and meditate. Look at verses 10 and 12. We're scrolling down the song. Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember the wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Notice what Asaph chooses to do here. He could easily drown in his questions. In this tidal wave of doubt, fear, and anxiety. Anybody ever felt this way? But as we see in verse 10, Asaph 
chooses to earnestly cry out to God. Yeah. On what basis, you ask? On the basis of the right hand yeah. of the Most High. Yeah. If we had time to search the song, we see that God's right hand is an image commonly used to describe God's almighty power. Amen. Here's an example from Psalm 63 and 8. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Asaph is appealing to the power of God in the midst of his adversity. Uh -huh. Like when Job rebuked his wife when he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And the reason he can appeal to God's powerful hand has to do with remembering. You see, Metropolitan, there is 156 years of history. We have to remember to give us what we need to move forward. But I also want us to see here that remembering is more than just bringing the past to mind. Look at verse 12. The psalmist writes that he will not only remember God's deeds, God's wonders, but that he will ponder all of Yahweh's work. And he will meditate on his mighty deeds. But the one thing that we have not unpacked, the one thing the writer has not made clear to us is, what are the deeds of the Lord? What are Yahweh's wonders of old? What is God's work? <laughs> what are God's mighty deeds? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the last lesson here is the what. The what in remembering. You, found in verses 13, 20, you redeemed your people. You redeemed your people. Look with me at the final verses of this psalm, beginning in verse 13. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people. The children of Jacob and Joseph, when the water saw you, Oh God, when the water saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightning lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea. Your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. As we can see very clearly from verse 20, the deeds of the Lord that Asaph had in mind here are best exemplified in the works and wonders surrounding God's deliverance of his people from Egypt. Amen. You with your arm redeemed your people. Yeah. But before the psalmist gets specific about the deeds of God, did you see the conclusion that begins with verse 13? Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God. His description of God's wonder is simply a way to showcase this conclusion. How do I know he is holy? That there is no God who is great like our God. Amen. Well, let me tell you how I know. Brothers and sisters and friends, Asaph was crying out to God in verse 1. This morning he is crying out to us from 3,000 years ago. Yeah. Think about what he showed us today. We've seen that in difficult times we can cry out to God. Right. And even though we will be tempted by questions about God's plan and God's provision, it is through remembering his deeds that is God carefully thinking about the meditating on his work, specifically, specifically about his past work and redemption, that we find healing, encouragement, and assurance in his presence. We serve a God who has never lost a battle. He has never lost a case. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that my God, he never fails. Psalm 95 puts, puts it in this way when it says, For the Lord is a mighty God. 
a mighty king above all gods. He rules over the whole earth, from the deepest caves to the highest hills. He rules over the seas, which he made, the land also, which he himself, he formed. Come, let us bow down and worship him. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. I have good news this morning, Metropolitan. As we continue our celebration this month, be encouraged that in spite of the valleys, we still have a way to go through. The many challenges ahead of us as a church, we can always look back at what our forefathers and mothers did and lean on that same promise that they did right now. With the words, and we know that all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Let us use the wonderful memories of these 156 years as a remedy for healing and to move onward and upward. Yeah. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Last week we was talking about not dwelling in the past. But it's okay to look back need to look back in order to have a present. Because you don't want to repeat what you did. You want to improve on what you did. <laughs> so you move forward. And you also look back to see what God did back then. How in the heck did some black folk build a church on this corner? That was nothing but God. If he can do it then, he can do it now. Same God right now. Same God back then. Let the church say amen. May we pray. Lord God, thank you for communicating who you are. What you have promised what you've done through your word. You are holy. You are greater than any man-made gods. There is no one like you. You are the only true God. Lord, we confess our forgiveness, our lack of trust, and we have allowed worry, stress, despair, and doubt to overtake us. Jesus, thank you for being our mighty redeemer. Thank you for dying on that rugged cross on Golgotha Hill for our sins. Help us to remember and to use what you have already done as a remedy for what we need right now. In your name, we humbly pray.
moment in the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 You can do better than that. Amen. 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 Now for the benediction. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith to the end that you be rooted and grounded in love may be strengthened to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and height and depth and to know Christ's love which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Now go in peace.